guys. Just wanted to share something else with you. Uh, been doing this for a while, and it just came to my attention that uh, not everybody knows about this stuff. These uh, UPS uh, uninterrupted, uninterrupted uh, power supply units here. They uh, they're invaluable when it comes to uh, getting prepared for like grid down or uh, hurricane situations, stuff like that. Uh, where your power is going to be off for a while, especially right now. we got a lot of winter storms going on. Uh, anyway, uh, what this is, uh, it's it, you plug in your stuff here, like your computer and whatnot, and it's going to keep the power on to those devices for a certain amount of time. And that amount of time is determined by, uh, you know, the battery inside of it. A lot of times, these have a 12-volt battery inside. And it's a lead acid battery and a lot of people throw these out because lead acid battery goes bad okay so that's i get a lot of these things all the time uh just driving around i see them on the side of the road you know and that's what's going wrong is the battery inside's going bad so let me go over what i do with these real quick so i'll plug them in okay I'll plug them in power them up you see there bad battery bad battery it tells me right there is a little indicator so we're going to check that out there's the battery well <clears throat> we'll go ahead and unplug it for now get the battery out it's going to have a positive and a negative red and black just like any other lead acid battery there you go. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, uh, 2010. So, yeah, probably. No good. All right. So, now you got your red and your black wires right here. Okay. See these? So, this is, this is designed, this box is designed to charge and keep charged a 12-volt lead-acid battery. It's designed to do that. And it's got, a, it's got a smart charger built into it that will top off these batteries. You see the gauge of these wires? I don't know if you can see this. It's a really big wire. I don't know. It's, uh, it's really big. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably like a 6 gauge. So it'll handle a lot of power. You look right here on the back label, or if wherever the side is, it's got the label on it. And it'll tell you right here the output. And what you should expect from the UPS uh, side. This side is just surge protection, and it typically laid out like this. One side will be surge protection, one side will be a battery backup set of plugs. So you look on here, it's going to tell you uh, the uninterruptible power supply output or UPS output 120 volts, 60 hertz, 390 watts. Okay. So this has inside of it a 390 watt power inverter built in that'll take the power from this 12 volt battery and run your 120 volt appliances. Now this is not a pure sine wave inverter. Keep that in mind. This is a, a, a square wave or a modified, uh, modified uh, square wave inverter. So this is not going to be ideal for every application. but. Uh, it shows here the output is 390 watts. So that is going to be the maximum wattage that you can expect from this machine. So keep that in mind. They make bigger ones, they make smaller ones. So this is what we've got. Uh, now I want, to check, I want to check to see if the charging circuit on this thing is working. So to do that I'm going to hook up my meter right quick. And uh, try to here. Uh, let me get a couple of finish nails. It's hard because they're insulated plugs. So let's get a couple of finish nails and then push in there. It's easy to hook up. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. There's one. And there's two. Now, I'm not plugged in right now, but even if I was, 12 volts isn't really enough to shock my dry hands. If my hands were wet, maybe, but my hands are dry. 
And I'm definitely not going to try and let these things touch each other. That is for sure. Because apparently there's a lot of amperage that can pass through these wires. So, let me just hook that up. Get my voltmeter set here. Yeah. I don't know if y'all can read that from there or not. It's showing, it's not even plugged in and it's got 5.4 volts stored in the capacitors in here. So let's check it out. 13.6, cool. So the charger circuit on this works for sure. So at the very least, this will make a great battery charger. That's telling me that it's just a bad battery. This thing should be great. But we'll, we'll hook it up to a, to a good battery and uh, we'll double check that. Uh, there's a power output on the front too. I wanna check that once we get a good battery in there. Uh, but anyway, this is what, what we do. Uh, once you've established that you've got a, a working unit that just had a bad battery in it, okay? And once you've tested everything else out by putting a good battery in it and trying it, uh, the next step you want to do, or what I do, is I cut these little ends off of here and I take a cheap pair of jumper cables and you just take them. The cheapest ones you can find don't really have to be super duper and just cut them right in half cut them right in half right here and wire those in with, with big wire nets and you can wrap them in tape and all that stuff drill you a hole drill you a hole in your lid where those those wires can come through you know put that through there and then put your uh put your wire nuts on it and now you, now you can hook that up to a car battery or to a, a battery bank, you know, How, and that'll, last, that'll make it last longer off, off grid. And in the meantime, you just can leave it plugged in somewhere in your house or wherever, and you just leave it plugged in and it keeps that battery full and topped off. And you never have to worry about it. And then when the grid goes down for whatever reason, transformer blows up or limb falls on your neighbor's tree and breaks the line you're good you got you got power uh that you can use this for this this is a it's really a good use for these things because they have all this stuff already built into them and they're a small little package the only limiting thing about them is the the output on the uh oh, on the inverter built in it's, it's they're usually kind of small i think i got one that's a uh, 1500 watt or it's 1500 VA so it's actually only like 860 watt something like that because uh, they go by VA that's what the bigger number so that's what they go with and they put that on the label like it says a 650 VA 390 watt all right so that is what they advertise see ES 650 so that's what they're showing on their advertisement but anyway, this is what you do. You get the jumper cables, hook them up. All right, and I'll do that to this one too eventually. Uh, but I've already got one that I did. I'll show you right quick. And it's done. This is here. Uh, now this one doesn't put out all that much. Let's see. This is an old one. The output on this one is, uh, eh, where is it at? Yeah, this one says 650, so it's probably about the same output as this one. It's not very, very strong. But here's what I've done. I've got power cord. This is what I use all the time. <laughs> uh, let me get it untangled here. Hold on. All right, there's the jumper cables and power cord here. So what I did here is where my, my two wires come in, my positive and negative, to the battery, I also wired in these little voltmeter that came from, I got from Amazon. They're very cheap. So I can actually use this as a tester as well. And this has a fuse on it, which help, makes me feel better because all the weird stuff that I do with these things. So I can just hook this up and it's gonna tell me a voltage right there it's a 10.4 volts so it's got a dead cell 
So if I plug it in, it should start trickle charging that battery or try to, and I can watch it. See, it jumped right to 13.7. So that tells me it's a dead cell, but the reason it's dead is because it's empty. There's no, there's no electrolyte in it. So it's probably just no good anymore. It's probably completely sulfidated. So anyway, that's that. And I'm pretty sure it won't run even this inverter. We can try it, but I doubt it. <clears throat> now it tripped. <laughs> yeah. Bad battery. Tells me right there. That's another cool thing. You can use these for battery testers. These older ones, I cut the beeper out of it. You know, the other one beeped a real loud beep. I cut this one so it doesn't beep at me because it gets really annoying testing stuff out. But yeah, there's your 13.7. And I take it off and it's showing the output from the, the unit itself is 13.8. So that's pretty strong output on this one. And it's heavier. This is one of those old metal ones. It's got a big transformer in there. <coughs> anyway, so this is it, guys. It's handy. You got your plugs in the back, you know, right here. You can plug stuff in. It keeps your batteries full and topped off. If you need it in a grid down situation, you've got, you've got you, uh, basically a, a complete setup right here. It keeps your batteries topped off and it's an inverter. Uh, when you hook up your, you know, hook up your cables out to uh, your battery, battery uh, bank. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I'm fixing to put this thing to work right now in another project. So y'all stay tuned for that one.